Thanks, Ken and Thomas. A pleasure to be here. Y you know, I've, I'm thankfully I've never seen a, a fire in my own operating room, but what I have seen probably about 10 times is my residents and fellows almost setting themselves on fire. We do a lot of switching of the laparoscope, uh, and, and when they disconnect the light cord, they will tend to hold it very, very close to themselves because they know I'm going to get very mad at them if they put it down on the patient. But So they hold it against themselves, and, and about 10 times I've noticed that they melt a little hole right through their scrubs, and at uh, two or three times I've actually seen smoke coming from their gowns. So uh, be careful. You, you definitely don't want to set your uh, patient on fire, but you also don't want to set your resident on fire. Um, well, maybe you do. I, uh, I don't want to make assumptions. Uh, let's talk about, this is a, a kind of an appropriate time to talk about ultrasonic energy because this is a nice way to avoid a lot of the things that start fires. I mean, what do you need for fires? You need a high temperature, you need a spark. You don't get sparks with ultrasonic energy because there's no electricity. Here are my disclosures. That's kind of timely, too, because I was sitting in the hallway yesterday when the inventor uh, of the Ultracision uh, walked by in the hallway, and I got to uh, meet him and talk with him a little bit about inventing it back in the early 1990s. Uh, so he's right here at the Sages meeting. Now, what is cautery? As we heard before, cautery is when you take a red-hot poker from the fire and you stick it onto your patient. Uh, it works very well, but that's not what we're doing with electrosurgery, and it's certainly not what we're doing with ultrasonic scalpels. Um, how hot should the tissue get? Well, you want to get into this middle range. Uh, if it's too cold, it's not going to do anything. If it's too hot, it leads to cellular vaporization. Uh, if it's much hotter than that, then you can get OR fires. So we want to shoot for this 60 to 90 degree centigrade range, and that's one of the things that uh, ultrasonic energy is really good at achieving. And we've heard about some of these ways that you can get injury from electrical energy. You can have the dispersive electrode partially pull off the patient's thigh, and that can cause an injury there. You can get current diversion. You can get uh, uh, injury from the active electrode if it touches the wrong thing. These are other things that you can avoid if you're not using electricity inside the patient. So what is mechanical wave or sound wave energy? Uh, it's just energy transported by disturbance of the material. Like when your friend is poking you in the arm once per second, that's mechanical energy, and it's annoying. But if it goes up to 20 hertz, that turns into a sound wave. Anything between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz or vibrations per second is audible. Uh, and once you get above 20,000 vibrations per second, that is ultrasound. So dogs can hear it, but we can't. Um, if you're thinking about ultrasonic uh, imaging devices, uh, ultrasound imaging, that's in the million uh, hertz range, anywhere from 2 million up to about 18 million. But we're using a lower frequency for our harmonic scalpels or ultracisions or ultrasonic shears or whatever you want to call them. Anything from about 20,000 to 50,000 vibrations per second. So it's too high to hear, but it's, uh, but it's high enough to transmit energy. So why do we want to use ultrasound? Well, there's no electrical circuit needed. You don't have to have a dispersive electrode. There's no electricity inside the patient. There's just mechanical energy inside the patient. And so there's no risk of stray electro electrical injury. There's no risk of a spark arcing from, a, uh, uh, from your instrument to a different instrument. Um, and there's no electrical interference to monitors. But you still need to be careful. Why? Because uh, if you've ever uh, had your hand near the tip of an ultrasonic instrument, they do get hot. So how does it work? Well, the ultrasonic instrument has two jaws. Um, one jaw is vibrating back and forth at that frequency between 20,000 or 50,000 times per second. And then there's another jaw that squeezes the tissue against this metal jaw, which is vibrating back and forth at that very high rate. Um, it causes its effect really in two ways. Number one, it does get warm. It's like rubbing two sticks together. The friction between the active blade, which is the metal one, and the compressing blade, which is the usually plastic or rubber, um, is what causes the, uh, the friction and the increase in temperature, uh, usually to that 60 to 90 degrees centigrade range. Uh, but it also causes some shock waves. So just as if you're rubbing two sticks together, it generates uh, direct forces that could rip apart a piece of tissue that were between it, the same thing happens with the ultrasound device. So it's, div it's both heating the tissue and transmitting directly mechanical energy, which can uh, pull the tissue apart. So if you look at it uh, diagrammatically, you've got a controller box, and that's where the electricity is. So the electricity is coming from the wall to the controller box, 
uh, and it's going into the handpiece. The handpiece that you're holding outside the patient is what converts the electricity to mechanical ultrasound energy, uh, but what's going inside the patient uh, to the shaft and tip of the instrument has no electricity. It's just mechanical energy. And here you can see it uh, more diagrammatically. Again, you've got an alternating current inside the box which goes to this piezoelectric disc. Piezoelectric discs, these are those black discs, and this, this is what your, uh, what your ultrasonic scalpel would look like if you took the handle off. You would see a, a stack of these discs that are attached to the electrical uh, connectors. And when you apply an alternating current to these discs, they expand and contract very, very slightly uh, at the same rate that the alternating current is being applied. So if your alternating current is 50,000 times per second, you're going to get a wiggle uh, in these piezoelectric discs at 50,000 times per second, and that gets transmitted down the shaft of the instrument. Um, again, this is, you may have a, a controller box which looks something like this. The wall current is coming in from the uh, electric plug in the wall. That's 120 volts and 60 hertz, or 60 cycles per second. And what this box is doing is it's converting it to a much higher voltage and a much higher frequency. Again, depending on the brand of the device you're using, it's going to be somewhere between 20 to about 50,000 cycles per second. And then this electricity is what gets passed to that handpiece that you're using with your ultrasound. And this is where the electrical wave gets converted into the mechanical wave. How much is this, is, the, is that mechanical tip vibrating back and forth? Very, very, very little. Uh, you can't really see it. It's anywhere from 0 0.08 to 0 0.2 millimeters. So it's just a tiny fraction of a millimeter that it's oscillating back and forth, but it's enough to send a lot of energy to the tissue that's being grasped. So how do we control how much energy we're transmitting to the tissue? Well, it's not quite as precise as we use with the electrical circuit where we can actually control the amount, the, the number of watts that we're sending to the patient. Usually there are two settings, max and min. Uh, it's almost like a volume control. So when you turn up the volume on your radio, you're making the speaker oscillate back more uh, at higher volume. Same thing with your uh, ultrasonic scalpel. When you turn it to max setting, the little blade is oscillating further back and forth and generating more power. When you use the higher setting, it's going to cut through tissue more quickly, uh, but because of that, there's going to be less time for thermal injury. So if you want to make sure that you're going to seal a vessel and transmit a lot of thermal energy before it cuts, you actually want to use the lower setting, the min setting. So it's a little bit counterintuitive. If you want to cut slowly and give a lot of thermal energy to the tissue, that's going to be the min setting. If you want to get through the tissue quickly, at the risk of causing more bleeding, you might want to use the max setting. So it's a little bit counterintuitive, but remember, to seal the bleeders, you want to use the lower setting because there will be more energy transmitted because it takes longer to cut through. Uh, also, if you are using the low setting, be cognizant of the fact that there's more time for that thermal energy to spread laterally and cause injury to the other things uh, next to what you're trying to seal. Um, now, every device is different. Some devices allow you to squeeze it uh, as hard as you want, uh, depending on how hard you, you, you squeeze the handle. Um, others have a little spring device, so no matter how hard you squeeze the handle, the jaws will not squeeze any, any harder than they're, they're limited by the spring. Uh, but you can affect how much you're cutting versus how much you're coagulating by how hard you squeeze the handles. Um, uh, remember, the straight blade, which is coming straight out of the shaft, is the one with the active energy, whereas the other one is just compressing the tissue against this hot blade. If you lift, if you're holding your instrument like this and you lift up, it's going to put more pressure from uh, between the tissue and that hot blade, and that's going to enhance the, the, the speed of the cutting, so it's going to cut through more quickly. If you want to avoid that and you want to cut slowly so that there's more time to seal the bleeders, uh, then definitely do not lift up on the tissues. So how is it sealing the tissues exactly? Well, it's compressing the walls of the blood vessel together. Um, it's going to heat the tissues up through that frictional heating up to about 60 to 90 degrees. It denatures the protein. It breaks those bonds that we heard about earlier. And the walls of the vessel are going to adhere to each other after the energy source is removed. Hopefully, it's not going to also stick to your, uh, to your device. And again, uh, the nice thing about the ultrasonic energy is that if you compare ultrasonic to electrosurgical energy, you're dealing with, with much lower temperatures. Usually in the 60, 60 to 90 degree range, you're not talking about 
100 to 150, you're certainly not talking about generating SCAR. And if you, if you think about it, when you're using the ultrasonic device, you never see that SCAR that you get by using the fulguration setting on your electrosurgical instrument. But how can you get in, uh, injuries? You can still get injuries. It, yes, it's a very safe instrument to use, but it can still cause problems. You do get lateral thermal spread. So when you apply your ultrasonic device here, it's still sending some energy up and some energy down, uh, and you have to be careful. It's not very much. It's about one to three millimeters. Uh, if you're working in a space like this, it's probably not a big deal. But if you're, you know, say you're doing a short gastric vessel right between the spleen and the stomach, very high up, you do have to be concerned about that one to three millimeters of lateral thermal spread. And you also have to remember that that hot blade stays hot after you turn off the energy. So uh, different from uh, the thin tip of an L-hook, which cools down relatively quickly, um, you've got a big chunk of metal, which is that the shaft of the ultrasonic instrument, and that holds the heat for a while. So even after you turn off the, the, the instrument, it stays warm, and if you touch it to bowel, you are going to get a burn. How big a vessel can you seal? Well, th this has been looked at in a number of studies. Um, uh, the advanced bipolar instruments are going to allow you to seal pretty big vessels, up to about <coughs> 7 millimeters. With the ultrasonic instrument, you can't go quite that big. So if you're used to sealing vessels with a, a fancy bipolar instrument, uh, you can't go quite as big, maybe up to about five millimeters, which is still a pretty good sized vessel. Uh, uh, so you're, in, in practice, you're going to be able to, to seal any vessel up to about five millimeter in size. So uh, we can finish up by just a few take home points here. What are the advantages of the ultrasonic device? It's very versatile. There's no dispersive electrode. There's no electricity inside the patient. You have minimal spread of energy, only that one to three millimeters of lateral thermal spread. You can seal vessels up to about five millimeter. And there's no char, so there's no smoke. But you don't, although you don't get smoke, you do get a lot of spray. And many of you know how often you have to clean your laparoscopic camera because of the spray that's created. Now, there's also a lot of heat retained in the shaft of the instrument, so be careful. And when you're done, applying the energy. Don't touch that hot blade to something you don't want to burn. Uh, remember that vascular sealing is affected both by the technique, how much you're lifting up on the vessel. If you lift up, it's going to cut faster and it's not going to seal as well. Uh, and also remember that it's affected by whether you're using the min setting or the max setting. Um, you can't ligate vessels quite as well as with the advanced bipolar device. And uh, although uh, although it may not be as expensive as some of the advanced bipolars, it's certainly more expensive than the L-hook. So there are some good parts and bad parts, but I think you can use it intelligently, and it's a, a nice tool to have. Thank you.